Yo, and welcome to our first World Slayer build video. This is going to be for the Pyro, and we're going to be utilizing the Heat Seeker sets. If you guys saw my video going over the new Heat Seeker set, this is going to be kind of a build that I've been working on ever since then. This build is going to allow you guys to clear things so incredibly fast. Like Expeditions, you are going to be flying through them. You're going to be getting sub five minute front lines, sub five minute chem plants, about three minute boom towns with some practice. It is crazy how fast you can clear content with this. I basically call this the popcorn build because there are so many thermal bombs going off at all times. It literally sounds like you're popping popcorn. Now you're not gonna have quite the single target damage that like AP Techno has or Devastator has right now, but the clear speed that you're gonna have in terms of mobbing is gonna definitely make up for it. So you're still gonna be clearing content quicker than those builds. But yeah, if you guys want to see me work on any sort of other builds, make sure you come on over to Twitch. We stream almost every single day, especially now that World Slayer is out. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys over there. I'm happy to answer any questions as well. All right, but let's go ahead and start looking at our skills first. So obviously our main skill is going to be Thermobomb. We have to use this with the Heat Seeker set. And as you guys can see, we're going to have insanely fast cooldowns across the board, not to mention our Pax Tree on top of that, which we'll get to here in a minute. But obviously Thermobomb. And then our other two skills are going to be Ash Blast. So Ash Blast is going to allow you guys to get to the explosions from one of the mods on our armor all of the time with the thermal bombs as it chains around. So it's gonna be insta-killing all of the different mobs. Also, it's gonna debuff enemies and it's really gonna help out your survivability when the enemies are just frozen, they can't shoot you or do anything. So it's really gonna help you guys out there, especially the crystal boss in the middle of the trials. It really helps with that phase as well. And then otherwise on the third skill, I have landed on overheat just because a lot of the times Ash Blast can freeze enemies outside the map and makes things take longer. Overheat is really nice because you can unfreeze them and deal a little bit of damage to them as well. Overheat is going to just do okay. It's not going to be like your top damaging source, but it is going to add up over the course of like an expedition or a trial. I was using Feed the Flames just for some survivability and overheat still works very well with that in terms of like burst healing, but it's a little bit more dependent on how many enemies there are. Feed the Flames is better when there is just one enemy, but I think overheat offers more utility as a whole for this build. But then let's go ahead and take a look at our class tree. So some of you guys might expect that we'd go bottom tree because we're using thermal bombs. That's actually not our best move. We're going to get a lot more damage out of the top tree because we're going to have damage to ashed enemies. And whenever we use Ash Blast, they're going to be inflicted with vulnerable as well. We're getting more damage to elites up here and another trial of the ashes here. It's going to be very, very helpful for clear speeds just because our biggest issue is single target. And this is going to help out our different damaging mods on our weapons and just our armor because none of those scale with like firepower or AP, anything like that. It's only going to be like damage versus this status effect affected enemy. So that's why we're going to be going top tree. Also, we get better cooldowns for Ash Blast as well. Our cooldowns on Thermal Bomb and the overheats are going to be short enough already with just this one node right here and their mods. So really all we need so also a really huge part is going to be hot situation you're going to have that 45 percent bonus to your anomaly which is going to help out your thermal bombs and overheats anyways so we do have very good anomaly power to begin with and then another cool thing with incinerate right here whenever you guys are using thermal bomb with the fire trap mod on the chess piece which we'll get to in a little bit this is actually going to inflict ash and burn the enemy when it hits them, which is very, very helpful. So even your thermal bombs are going to be slowing down enemies for you on top of your ash blast itself. And then we're going to be going down and grabbing extinction as well. And then for our Pax tree, I've played around with different things like doing some top tree stuff because the carbonization right here, enemies hit by your mobilized skills, receive 20% more anomaly damage for four seconds. That's actually a pretty big boost and a pretty decent debuff. Also, there's some damage mitigation and bonus damage up here. But I have landed on just running the bottom tree over here. This is going to help out our explosive skills. And mainly, it's just going to allow us to spam our abilities nonstop. So you guys are going to have endless chains with your thermal bombs. And you're going to have constant healing going out as well with like overheats. And also, obviously, stunning the enemies with Ash Blast. But feel free to play around with the two. I found the top tree a little bit better if you guys are just doing like the final boss of Trials. So maybe you can swap between the two depending on what type of content you're playing at that time. The Ascension points really don't matter. Obviously, you just put it into whatever you want as you guys are going through, depending on what build you're doing. But this is what mine look like right now. The main one I always try to focus on is like cooldown just because that's always useful. Also, like status power helps as well. But... Just in general, this is what my ascension points are looking like at the moment. Now let's start taking a look at our gear. Let's start off with the weapons. 
So our weapons with this are really just going to be ways of dealing some single target damage because like I said, this build struggles a little bit more with the bossing side of things, mainly just the end boss and trials takes a little bit longer, maybe like 25 seconds, depending on your rotations with your weapon swaps and what weapons you have for it. But for me, I've landed on using Fortress, Strings of Goss, and Claymore on my main weapon. So right now that's on a Death Shield, but honestly, if you could get that combo on a Damascus, that's probably gonna be your best bet because this also has status power and skill leech on here, and you're gonna be reloading less, and you're gonna just overall have more ammo as opposed to a Death Shield. There are some times I run out of ammo if I'm not actively going around and picking up the different ammo drops. And then my swap weapon is a Thunderbird, so obviously Ultimate Storm Whip on there. And then I have Dimensional Rockets. That is probably your best damaging source for the end boss in the trials. And then otherwise, I threw Ultimate Anomaly Surge. You can do any of the, like, hit a crit. It's going to do a burst of damage. And then you can put some swap weapons on the pistols as well. So I have, like, Violent Rupture, Claymore, and Deadly Disturbance. But it's completely up to you. Just ways of dealing single target damage is going to help you guys out a ton. The mobbing is going to be completely handled by our Heat Seeker set. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Heat Seeker set itself and the rest of our armor. So we're going to be using the Heat Seeker's helmet. We're going to keep Thermal Reaction on there. This is a big damaging source. And then you guys can also get shots off in between your two Thermal Bombs as well. So you can get an extra proc of this. So that is very, very helpful. And then I like to throw Big Boom on here just to help out my clear speed. Big Boom, you can actually kind of swap to whatever you guys want. Like if you want more anomaly power, you can do arms and anomaly. It's kind of up to you what you do with that slot. Um, I've been playing around with different things and I always end up settling back on Big Boom. But then otherwise my apocalypse mod here on the helmet was double fun so I can get more thermal bomb procs on there. And then my chest piece is gonna obviously keep fire trap. That's gonna be one of our top damaging sources across the board it is so so powerful it is huge for clearing out different enemies so keep that on there otherwise i threw on death sentence to debuff the enemies with my ash blast we're gonna be spamming that non-stop so that debuff's always gonna be active and then my chest piece has captain hunter that is huge and then i'm um, to my pants we're gonna throw on detonator over here so we, our overheat has 50 percent less cooldown and then we're gonna keep fire frenzy so we get that second thermal bomb and then my pants have branded so we can also debuff with our thermal bombs as well and then onto the gloves i like to use the ash blast range that's very huge for taking out more enemies and just keeping them at bay in a larger area and then master consumer so we can consume that ash as well and chip off more damage from the different enemies but most importantly we can remove the ash from enemies that are locked outside of the map because you can't target them with thermal bomb the chains from heat seeker can actually travel to the enemies locked outside the map but this is very huge for just speeding up your clears and then I have True Blast on here. This helps out the damage of your thermal bombs a lot. This is now going to make your thermal bombs one of your top damaging sources as well. So that's very helpful. And then finally, I cannot find good purple boots to save my lights. So I'm just using the Heat Seeker boots. Even though they're max health, it ends up just working out. So I throw on Ashen Boost and Bullet Kindling on there. And then they ended up rolling with Unstoppable Force. You guys can kind of play around with Unstoppable Force if you want it or not. That's just what I ended up having. And it's good enough for me. I'm getting insane clear speeds to begin with. But really try to make sure you get Ashen Boost and Bullet Kindling on here. Because those are going to directly affect the damage of your different mods. So like Fire Trap thermal reaction and our different weapon swaps over here that's really the only thing that's going to boost their damage is mods like that so it is very important that you guys have those equipped and then for a quick review i'm just going to have all of our gear up on the screen right now our weapons our armor all of the different mods for it and then also our class tree and our packs tree nodes as well so if you need any screenshots make sure you guys take them right here and copy them into your game i also forgot to mention if you guys are looking for purples and the passives you want on there you're just going to want anomaly cooldown and like skill leech is probably going to be your best bet for those three so like always the gear is just part of what makes the build good the other part is knowing how to play it so i'm just going to be here to show you guys exactly how i run this now really all you need to do with this is just spam your ability you're gonna have a non-stop cooldowns like you you're always gonna have an ability available and as you guys can see and this is why it's called the popcorn build it's we're just sitting here doing nothing and everything is just exploding uh don't forget to use like your overheats and stuff like that so you can get your cooldowns going from your pack trees just a heads up i usually uh forget because i'm pretty dumb but for the most part as you guys can see we're hitting like almost 10 million uh, doing pretty much nothing. We're just casting abilities. Uh, it's really not that hard. And as you guys can see, I'm also taking essentially no damage because nothing can attack me with Ash Blast constantly being out. Really the only time things can hit you is when they're at range like that. Like Rifleman is probably gonna be your scariest thing to face. 
Uh, make sure you also keep Fortress proc'd as well, and that's one thing I keep forgetting to do. Now we're going to be doing more damage, and as you guys can see, it's going to help out our overall damage a ton more. Uh, just keep spamming your different abilities, and an Elite is just gone in a couple skill casts. It's very, very easy to play, and you guys are going to have really easy times doing anything solo, co-op. I've mostly played this build co-op, but it is actually easier solo in my opinion. So let's see how this does against a couple elites here. Unfortunately, you gotta wait for them to spawn into the map fully before we can actually attack them. And that guy's dead before anything really happens. And we can make a swap if we stop getting knocked down. That would also really, really help. But he's gonna travel over here. We can just freeze him, shoot him. Almost 30 million damage in one shot from our swap weapon. So don't be afraid to be swapping around. That's gonna be how you're dealing a lot of your single target damage. Uh, especially on the bosses later on in the trials, you're just gonna be swapping back and forth. But it's very much worth it to do that for the clear speeds we're getting out of the rest of our mods. So I ended up just clicking abandon so you guys can see the end screen here. And in just that short couple minutes, we did over a billion damage. And as you guys can see, Thermal Bomb went ham. The extra radius on Thermal Bomb helps a ton because normally Fire Trap will kill the things around it. So there's nothing left for Thermal Bomb to hit. But since it's got that increased radius, it can perform a lot better. And that's also, once again, with the top tree, it is very much worth it to be going top tree instead of bottom. And then otherwise, Claymore is fantastic. Overheat, putting in some work as well. Strings of Goss is very good. I didn't really shoot my guns as much as I should have because some of these mods will end up being a lot higher on this list as long as you guys are using your different weapon mods. But yeah, that's our Heat Seeker popcorn build. This is seriously one of the fastest clearing pyro builds in the game right now. It's disgusting what you can do in terms of expeditions and the trials here. Uh, the boss solo really is no big deal by yourself. Uh, usually I will be killing him before he goes into his like little damage phase. So that's very, very huge. That phase is very tough to deal with. So any build that can get him down before that is going to be a very good build to farm the trials on. But like I said, if you guys have any sort of questions regarding this build, make sure you come by stream, ask me over there. I'm happy to help you guys out. Otherwise, we're gonna be working on new pyro builds. We're gonna be using a burn build here very soon. And it is very, very strong for single targets. So it's gonna be a, kind of the opposite of this build. So make sure you guys head on over there if you're interested in that. But make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Also, make sure to leave a like on it to let me know. But hopefully you all have a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.